Psalms 46. For there is a word from the Lord. So I'm happy to see all of you here today. It tells me that God is still blessing us. Amen. Still supplying our every need. That's encouragement to me. Psalms 46. There are 11 verses there. I will be reading for the new international version. I ask that you will pray for me. In this time of seasons and allergies, we don't, we don't do too well. But we know God is able. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, and ever present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, Salah. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Salah. Come and see the works of the Lord. The desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens or the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The, all, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Salah. That is the reading of the word of God. We ask God to bless readers, heroes, but most of all the doers of his holy word. I want to talk about God as our ruler. God is our ruler. Thank you, ushers. God is our ruler. Psalms number 46 deals with how the Assyrian host, King Shanachariah, sends a message to King Hezekiah of Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem's walls are impregnable. But they are fearful of the mighty host of King Sennacherib and the Assyrian army. Right. Syria has already uh, been plundered. Judah has already been burned. And now they're ready to storm the gates of Jerusalem. And Hezekiah wants to buy peace from their feared enemies, the Assyrians. He sends enormous amount of talents a large amount of money to persuade Sennacherib's anger and wrath against him. But they refuse it, and they surround the city of Jerusalem. But Isaiah the prophet sends word to King Hezekiah that God is still in control. And what happens is God sent an angel, one angel in one night, to destroy the armies of the Assyrian host and Hezekiah or Isaiah writes Psalms 46. God is our refuge. Not the impregnable walls of Jerusalem. But God is our refuge. Not your honey in the bank. Not your political connection. Not your friends in high places. But God is our refuge. And the Bible said he is our strength and a very present help in the time of our troubles. That word trouble in, means in some tight places. Whenever life squeezes us, whenever the world tries to bend and break us, we can depend on God to be our refuge and our strength. Can I get a witness here? Yes, For the word says, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swellings thereof, 
we can stand firm because we know who is our refuge. Right. And then he says there's a river. A river, the streams that make glad the city of God. Well, you see, there is this hidden source of water. Uh, this water, this, this, this river that flows from a rock into the city of Jerusalem. And, and that water is his hidden from the presence of the enemy. Uh, they just believe if we stay around the wall long enough, they'll have to come out because they need water to survive. But little did they know God was sending water into the city. And the Bible said the city was glad. It kind of reminds me of Psalm 23. When the word says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod, rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God was blessing them. And the enemies couldn't even see the blessing. All right. Get that to somebody. God was taking care of them mm -hmm. when they thought that they had overtaken them. Mm -hmm. You see, there's this river uh, that flows into the city to keep them while the enemy is at the gate. And it makes glad the city of God. Because there's God is in the midst of them. But now look at how this Saw closes. It, it closes with a prophetic word. For the past and for the present. He says, after considering who is our refuge. Yeah. After you have wrestled over who is our strength. After you have turned over in your minds who's a very present help in the time of trouble. After you have brooded over how there's a river that flows and makes glad the city of God. Come here and behold the works of God. All right. Yes, My dear, today we ought to be encouraged. We ought to be encouraged by what God has done for us in the past. Are you hearing me? All right. No Christian, no child of God ought to never walk around with his head bowed down in discouragement about how your future is going to turn out when you remember what God has done in your past. All right. Get out of the here. Come on, yeah, come on. You got to be awfully young not to have a history with the Lord. Because see, some of you who've been walking with the Lord a long time, you, you, can, you can pull up God's track record. Then, and you can testify that, yes, he is a refuge. Yes, he is my strength. Yes, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. Yes, he is a strong tower. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yes, he is joy in the midst of my sorrow. Yeah. Strength in my weakness. All right. I know it because I've been walking with him for a long time. Uh -huh. oh, I'm a little nervous, y'all. I get a little nervous with people who, who think church is a place where you go instead of a place that you are. That needs to simmer just a little bit. I know, I know. But you got to know who the church is. Oh, yeah. It's not where you're going, but it's who you are. See, know those of us who are here today. We are the church gathered. And when we leave here, we are the church scattered. But wherever we are, we are the church. Help me somebody. And at the church, we ought to be witnesses, rather gathered or scattered. In the checkout counter at the grocery store. You ought to be a witness to somebody. Yes. On your job tomorrow, yes. somebody needs to know about the Lord. Yeah. If anybody asks you who you belong to, who you know, who you loves you, or who loves you, or who's been walking with you, don't ever be ashamed to tell them. Oh, yes. God is our refuge oh, yes. and our strength. Yes. Oh, yes. This prophetic word, because one day the Bible says Jesus will come himself. To destroy the armies of the world right. at the Battle of Armageddon. Yeah. It is in that conflict that the Bible says that the swords will be turned into plowshares, spears will be turned into pruning hooks, and the people of God shall study war no more. All right. But that won't happen until Jesus comes. 
Help me somebody. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because Satan and the Antichrist is already lining up to do battle with Jesus over plains of Armageddon. Oh, yeah. But for the Christian, but for the child of yeah. God, yeah. they ought to not terrify us. Oh, yeah. Because we know that because, because he rose from the grave, yeah. the battle is over before it even gets started. Yeah. All right. yeah. 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 Preach. 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 Come on now. Again, yeah, no Christian. Or to walk around with your head bowed down, depressed, wondering about how tomorrow is going to turn out. Oh, yes. Jesus already fixed that. Yes, yes. Jesus yes. already paid the price yes. for that. Oh, yes. He's already died for your debt. Thank you. Help me somebody. Oh, yes. He's already made Thank right you. for what's been wrong and crooked yes. in our lives. Yes. Because we don't fight for the victory. We fight because of the victory. Yes. All right. All right. That's the prophetic word. But then it speaks of what happens in the past. When they woke up the next morning. When they got up, dead bodies of the Assyrian host was all around the Jerusalem walls. Because it took God one night with one angel to destroy the entire army. Oh, happy Lord Jesus. So go on to sleep tonight. Pull the colors over your ears. Don't keep getting up and looking at the clock and worrying about what tomorrow's going to bring. Because why? You're sleeping all night and all day. Angels. Get me somebody. Keep watching over me. Every move I make, every step I take, God is right there to put my hand in their place. Right there. Not only is it prophetic or in the past, it's also good for the now and the present. Because brothers and sisters, we engage in a life and death struggle. We're in a battle between good and evil. We're struggling with principalities, with powers, with rulers of darkness in this world, with spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil ain't playing with us. Right. He's trying to destroy us. Come on, man. Come on. We're in a battle. Yes. You've been watching the news lately? <laughs> and I've been praying for my president. Take your time. Take your time. Come on, come on, I've been really praying for him. Take your yeah. time. Because I sincerely believe that what is going on in this world is a concentrated attack against our president. All right. All right. Because when you look at those signs people are carrying, you, you look at those TV ads. That's a cult saying, we don't want you to be president no more. All right, now. All right. Help me somebody. All right. All right. There are some who don't want us, the people of God, to rise up. All right. And church, we got to understand, united, we can stand, but divided, we go home. Come on, Peter. Yes. Bible says, Let the, uh, except the Lord build the house. All right. They labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord keep the city. To keep the watchman, keep the president waking, but in vain. Mm -hmm. But what I'm glad about today is that God is in control. Mm -hmm. God is our refuge. Yes. Have I got a witness here? Yes. All of my help comes from the Lord, not Washington, D.C., right. <laughs> not Austin, Texas. Right. My help, your help, yeah. comes from the Lord. Oh, yeah. Whether bills get passed in the Senate or not. The word says, I will keep him in perfect peace who has his mind stayed on me. When hell breaks loose all around you, God said, I can keep you in perfect peace. Yes, yes. You ain't got to lose your mind. Mm -hmm. I will keep you. Matter of fact, I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. All right, come on. Folks wondering how you can keep it all together oh, yeah. in the midst of what's going on. Oh, yeah. But I'll give you my peace. Jesus said, not as the world gives. Well, that's I give it unto you. Well, I don't know about you today. But I'm going to stay with the one who brought me. I voted for Obama. I'm going to, but I'm going to stay with Jesus. Because when the world starts to come unglued, the president can't help me. Oh, yeah. right. Help me somebody. Right. I need somebody who holds the president in his hand and the whole world in his hand to help me. Let me share this and I'm going to get ready to leave you alone. Look at the person of God. 
It's there in verse number 10. It says, be still. Watch this. Take time. And know that I am is God. But the only way to know that, you got to be still. The same I am that Moses talked about. The same I am that opened the Red Sea. That same I am who defeated Pharaoh and his army. Said, be still and know that I am is God. You know, church, a lot of us are moving too fast. Come on, man. We're, we're, we're too much in a hurry. Yes, yes. We hurry to eat. Hurry to get off the phone. Hurry to text because we don't spell the words out when you numbers and symbols. We hurry up and dress. Yes. Hurry up and rush off the work. Yes. Because everything in life is rushing from one thing to the next thing. Oh, I know I got a witness here. And before we know it, we are worn out that we take no time to really know that I am is really God. Sometimes God has to stop you in your tracks. Sometimes God has to uh, put you flat on your back where you don't have no other choice but to look up. All right, now. Somebody's going to get that on the way home. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be unemployed and unemployable come on, come on. for you to realize that God's been trying to get your attention all along. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't listening to him. I wasn't listening to the message. I didn't pay no attention to the Sunday school. Pastor can't tell me nothing. But now God says, be still. All right. All right. Come on, All right. Slow down. Yes. Because I am is what you really need all along. There you go. It's not your money that keeps you going. It's not a good education that, uh, that's gotten you to where you are. Yes. It was God who has brought you and God who is keeping you. Yes, yes. Help me somebody. Oh, yes. It's God who's been holding your hand all along. Because mm -hmm. you will lose your child. You can lose your job in the morning. Yes. But if you got God, God will get you. Oh, yeah. Be still sometime. Get quiet. Slow down. Make yourself rest. Take a Sabbath. Take a day when you do absolutely. No. Well, look like some of y'all are doing that right <laughs> You don't return any email. Yeah. I know I'm getting on some toes now. Take a day when you don't text nobody. Yeah. Don't call nobody. Yeah. Take some time to practice some spiritual yeah. discipline. Yeah. Silence, solitude, a meditation. Yeah. And let God talk to you. Yeah. Because when we mess up God's heart, we have strokes, we have heart attacks. When we mess up his heart, we have serious problems. Uh, when we mess this all up, because this is God's order. God, family, church. God, family, and church. Don't, don't forget that. Maybe I need to explain it. If you spend all your time at church, you can't spend no time with your family. If you spend all your time with your family, you won't ever get to really know God. And if you don't know God, you're going to mess up your family and the church. Be still and know that I am is God. I, I pray I'm helping somebody here. Quit believing the world can't go on without you. <laughs> Die and see that the world will continue to turn. <laughs> everything. No, no, no. The only person I know can handle everything is Jesus Christ. Okay. And, and listen, listen. You're not your children's savior. <laughs> Let them fall. Yes. They'll learn. Yes. Okay. Amen. 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 And if they don't learn, after you talk them, it's not your fault. Yes. Raise them to love God. Raise them to take care of themselves oh, and let them go. Y'all don't like that. Thank you, preacher. <laughs> 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 yes. My dad said, you know, you're on your own now, boy. Yes. Sometimes you got to let them go and grow them up. Thank you, Jesus. They can grow up and you keep them. You learn all the same part. Let them fall sometimes. I can't tell you how many times I've them. But a judge man to get back up again. That's right. Get that to Lord Jesus. 
Right. Raise them to love God to take care of themselves and let them go. I would say put them out, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> let them go or set you enough. So I'm going to stay right there. But what I want to tell you, the world is not going to fall apart. They're not going to fall apart. In November of 63, everybody who loved President John Fitzgerald Kennedy thought the world had come to the end when he was assassinated. But let me tell you, in seven minutes, there was a new president. He hadn't even made it to the mortuary. But in seven minutes, they got on the phone, and the vice president became the president. Meaning that God would never leave us without a witness. Come on, preacher. Don't think the world's going to stop without you. The church will not stop. There's a lot of pastors came through here before I got here. Uh, there, there was Williams and there was Johnson. I can go back to Harris, but God sent Harris. Harris left. Lewis come. When Lewis left, Blaine come. When I leave, somebody else is going to come. Oh, yeah. And in the Bible, there was a prophet after prophet all the way up until the New Testament that came. And John the Baptist came on the scene. When he went off, Jesus came on the scene. Right. When Jesus left the scene, Paul comes on the scene. Because God will never leave himself without a witness. Be still. And know I am is God. That's God's person. But then God has a plan. He has a plan. It's right here in verse 10. He says, be still and know that I am God. Here's God's plan. I will be exalted among the heathens, the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Oh, oh, oh let me tell you something holier than thou. That there is no vacancy in the Trinity. There's no sign saying we need help. So put it in your spiritual application. God does not need your help. He said, I will be. Not, not we will be, but I will be. And that's God talking to us. Saying, I will be exalted in all the earth. Let me give you that. King Herod found out the hard way. He, he sat up one day where he got all dressed up in his royal apparel and he sat on the throne and made a speech and, and the people shouted saying, it's the voice of God and not a man. <laughs> and the Bible says immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, killed him. That's right. Because God will have no one take it through. Maybe we need to back up and say, did I say any good Sunday? Did I pray all right? Did I preach good? Maybe we need to back up. All right now. It ain't us, but it's God. God said, nobody will take my glory. God's glory belongs to him and him alone. God's glory. He's our ruler. And listen, don't, don't ever think you got it going more than God. God is not in competition with you for his throne. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen, among the nations, for there is none like him. And finally, as I take my seat, verse 11 says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We looked at God's person. We looked at God's plan. And now I want us to see God's present. It's his present. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Is with us. Yes. Now, now get this. They are around God's throne right now. All right. Thousands and ten thousands of angels at his disposal. That can easily be sent on an errand to take care of it for the Lord. All right. But God does not let even his angels do his work. Okay. Y'all have to close this. The Bible says not the angels, not the host are with us. But the Lord of hosts is with us. All right. I hope we got that. Right. God can send 10,000 times 10,000 angels right. to take care of our problems. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't do that. He comes to take care of it himself. Yeah. All right. If that don't get you happy, I don't know what we right. We serve a God who will come and see about his people. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you imagine God himself? The Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. 
coming down from heaven to take care of his children. Yeah. Not sending angels to take care of his business. Mm -hmm. When you are a child of God, yeah. he'll come and be with you himself. Yeah. You don't hear me? Yeah. Isn't that good news? Yeah. I said, isn't that good news? Oh, yeah. The Lord of Jacob, the Lord of hosts, yeah. is with us. He is our refuge. He's our uh, uh, present help yeah. in the time of trouble. When life gets hard, when life gets tough, oh, yes. when tears come streaming down sometimes, when it don't look like I can make another step, yes. the Lord will come to our rescue. Oh, yes. The Lord will come and stand up by our side. Yes. He won't leave you in your difficulties, but he'll come get in the difficulties with you. Oh, yes. He said, I'll never leave you. And he said, I won't forsake you. When trials thought they had us, and the devil thought he had the best hand, the Lord came to our rescue. And we can stand and tell the devil, how do you like me now? Oh, yes. It's all because God has brought us. God has kept us. God has made us. And God is making ways for us. He'll open the door for you. He can heal your body. Oh, yes, he will. He'll put food on your table. He, he, he'll pay your bills. He'll put a little money in your pocket. Hell, I got a witness. It's all about God. It's all about God. He's been our refuge. And he is our refuge. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. Call on him and see if he won't come see us. Call on him and see if he won't make a way. Call on him and see if he won't solve that problem. I dare you to call him and see if he won't heal your body. I let you hear me a very present help in a time of trouble. All I need is God. And if I got God, I can make it in this world. I don't care if you got a plan. I don't care if you go to the seven best things. I got God on my side. And I can make it. And you can make it. You got to hang on in there. You got to get hooked up with Jesus. And when you get hooked up with Jesus, you're going to be hooked up with God. You can have a connection there. You can't get to God without getting to Jesus hurt. And when you get in hooked up with Jesus, you become a heir. A joint heir with Christ. You be connected with the Father. Then you can say, Our Father, which art in heaven, you can call him your Father. Because now you're in his family. But let me say, get in his family. And God can be your ruler. God can be whatever you need. Oh, yeah. right. But you got to get in his family. A pastor used to say, you need to get in the blessing business. Get in a blessing area. Why are you over here and you know the blessings over here? Right. Come on where the blessings are. Get connected with God. Because he's going to need it. Time is getting rough. I tell you what, if I'm going to get back in here, oh, I don't know going to need God. It's time to get close to him now. Because we need, we can't make it. He said, I'll hide you in my pavilion. You don't have to worry about Satan. I'll protect you. You belong to me. All you got to do is be still and watch me fight your battle for you. Yes, I don't need you to help me out. Because see, you're going to fight it the wrong way. You're going to fight it your way. But if you be still and wait a moment, I'll take care of it for you. And too many of us are going to have to answer to God. Because we're trying to fight our own battles. You know, I know what they say about you. I saw what they've done to you. Be still and let God take care of you. He's our refuge. He's our strength. And he's a very present help. In our times of trouble. God bless you. Amen. Amen. What a powerful, powerful, powerful word.